It's time for Project Paladin. Welcome back to Cocky Gachas and in this video I'm going to touch on how I am personally going to prepare on the job change to Paladin, what I'm going to do with my builds from now till then and also how I'm going to approach the equipment situation because there are a lot of things that you need to take note of when you change job and also for people that just recently changed job to champion, you should know the pain, right? If you are not adequately prepared, your new job is not going to shine as much brightly as you want it to be and honestly, I'm hoping for Paladin to drop in about a month's time. I'm not sure if that is going to be the case but we are going to work with that timeline in mind. So the first thing I want to touch on is that when you go into a build itself, right, when you go into a job change itself, you need to understand what kind of a build you are going to job change into. So for instance, right, as a lot knight, you have various ones where you have the clashing spiral, people are running the auto um, attack builds with the sword quicken, right? There's also people that are also running like Vanguard 4. So there are various builds. So when it comes to Paladin, the same thing applies. When it comes to Paladin, I am expecting a few meta builds when it comes to um, the initial phase when it launches right so namely it will probably be the shoe route which is the shoe boomerang and shoe chain the sacrifice route so you are going to sacrifice your hp for um increased attack on your normal attacks and then the last one is going to be the holy cross grand cross route so three main routes that i'm going to foresee being somewhat good when it comes to the arrival of paladin and me personally i'm actually leaning towards the sacrifice route and for that itself, right, depending on what route you are going to go for, you need to understand what are the requirements. So I'm just going to share with you guys what you need to do. So for a shoe boomerang route, you definitely need a highly refined shoe. That is That goes without saying, right? So your shoe should be your main focus because with the shoes increased uh, refinement, you're going to have more attack based on the cross shoe. So for the holy cross, I think it's mainly just attack speed. So prepare your attack speed cards, prepare your refine, your enchants and stuff like that. But for the sacrifice, which I am leaning to, words personally i need a plus 15 weapon and the reason is very simple is because of this weapon that you see over here right this is where it showcased that for a plus 15 sacrifice right you are not going to be limited by the number of attack that you can use sacrifice on but instead it's going to be duration based so for people that are unaware sacrifice is a skill when you trigger right without the plus 15 refinement you're going to have a limited amount of hits before you have to recast the sacrifice again so that you can have the benefits of the sacrifice bonus attack so ma many people claim that this is going to only be relevant when it comes to plus 15 i would say that that is not entirely true but at the same time if you want to play it to its maximum potential you want it to be better than shoe boomerang as well as the um, holy cross build right you do need to go uh, to plus 15 so that is going to be my main concern when changing jobs so in one month's time i need to hit plus 15 that is the thing that i'm planning for so you can see right now i i already hit plus 11 so it was quite lucky i went one time from plus 10 uh plus 10 to plus 11 but i fit one time on plus 12 so with that in mind right i need a lot of resources i need a lot of enriched uh already con i need a lot of diamonds because i need to buy all the blessed ores i have like uh, a bit more stored in my storage i think i'm up to 16 each week you're only allowed to buy 20 so i'm planning to buy out everything um from the shop moving forward until the arrival of paladin right or, or until i hit plus 15 then that's just my plan in mind so with that in mind right my current strategy for that is that i need to go towards a resource generation route which is why i'm going to tell you guys something shocking as you can see right here my, my main focus build is a clashing spiral build right i have also the cause for it as you can see over here so this is a clashing spiral build that i've been using up until now for farming and also like the time space and stuff like that uh except for maybe mvps i've changed to a tank but i'm still using a carlos build but going forward for level 80 as we are uh, closely approaching level 80 i'm going to focus on using a one-handed sword build from now on because um the reason is very simple i want to first prepare for as little changes as possible when i go into a paladin so you definitely know that you need a shield when you go into a paladin so i'm definitely wanting to change it as early as possible so that i don't waste any extra zenny right crafting the um, level 80 cardo and then subsequently changing into a sword and shield build when paladin drops and also the reason why i'm going for this um excalibur as well as a shield i think i'm probably going to go with um either the crack buckler or the platinum shoe over here right so the reason why it's very simple i'm going to switch my focus from leveling 
to MVP. So the MVP rewards, as you guys understand, right, gives you extra benefits, which allows you to get more Demic Cogwheels. And in general, just the diamonds is what I'm focusing on so that I can buy out all the stuff that I want. And also for Endless Tower itself, I'm finding that the Cardo Spear route for tanking is not cutting it at all. So that is the reason why I am changing into that build. And also when I change to Paladin, like I mentioned, right, no extra Zanny. All the Zanny needs to be funneled into getting my refinement plus 15. And as you can see here, I've slowly accumulated up to 1.1 million Zanny, which I was previously saving this power, right? Mainly just for skeleton worker cut. But right now my focus has changed. I'm going to use this for plus 15 weapon. And also the leftovers, I'm going to buy crit damage and crit rate cuts um, specifically for the sacrifice build which is going to be more favoring that than the ratio cut so that is my plan for my zany so i want to really make this build as uh like relevant as possible up until then so you guys might be wondering now so if i were to go into um the level 80 using excalibur right how am I going to level up? And the answer is, I'm not going to level as well as previously. It is a sacrifice that I choose to make uh, in favor of other aspects. But I don't think it's going to be that bad as well. You can also just hold like one Excalibur when you are farming. Because you don't want a shoe, right? When you are farming, uh, simply because your attack speed is going to drop uh, when you are holding a shoe. So that is what I'm planning to go with from an equipment front. And then when I reach plus 15 refinement, I'm going to see whether um, it's far away from level 90. If it's too far away, I'm going to craft and transfer my um, Excalibur to the spear itself for me to go to Sacrifice Build before like level 90. But optimally, I would say that going uh, to a Sacrifice Build at level 90 would be more beneficial because it's going to cost you a lot to transfer a plus 15 weapon to a new weapon, right? So uh, that I'm not looking forward to. But uh, regardless, that is my plan for now. It really depends on how lucky I get with the plus 15 refinement. So on the other end, right, for people that are also going to change up to Paladin, maybe you are more focused on the shield, then you do want to start saving up all your Illumium. And as you can see here, even though I'm not going for a shield boomerang shield chain build, I did previously save up a lot of Illumium. So I'm hoping to at least hit plus 9 shield with this. Fingers crossed, right? We don't, we don't really know when it comes to refinement, whether we're going to get lucky. But this is my plan. For people that are going for uh, shield boomerang, you want a lot more than this because your cross shield is optimally uh, wanting at least plus 12. But of course, plus 15 is going to be the best. So um, just change your routes right instead of spending on Zemi on on Oridicon maybe you want to save it from for Illumium if you're going for a shoe boomerang build so that is just the general from a um, stockpiling standpoint right and of course previously I also did mention about the cost so given the fact that we have one month now I am going to also not going to fuse any of our Demic Cogwheels and also the Vesper cost I'm just leaving it as it is right I'm not going to fuse any of them for the Arch them though you're going to face a problem and that is going to be your backpack problem if you uh, constantly Constantly MVP, you're going to obtain a lot of this Arch Dam Cogwheels and it's going to power up uh, such that your backpack is going to be constantly full. So for this, I suggest to dismantle all of this and then when you go into the point shop over here, there should be a uh, anonymous... Wait, where is it? The metal shop. It, they change it to metal shop. So yeah, for the metal shop here, if you have a low weight Vesper core, you can definitely save up for this dismantle of the Arch Dam Cogwheels into the Titanium 2 so that you can reset the uh, low weight Cogwheels. It's going to be quite good. Otherwise, right, I also suggest for stockpiling of the cockwheel gachas. And as you can see right here, I do have like 27. I'm stockpiling until I change to um, Paladin. And of course, for your Demic cockwheels, if you have low weight Demic cockwheels, you also want to dismantle the um, Demics to save up for this currency so that you can buy out this uh, Titanium 3 for you to reset your low weight Demic cockwheels. So these are all the preparations, right? But of course, I'm not going to touch my Demic cockwheels up until the point where my Paladin actually drops. And for most people, I think that this is a very sound strategy when it comes to preparing for job change regardless of whether it's paladin or for any other job in the future now one last thing i want to touch on briefly although this is not going to be as important it's going to be stop howling the gacha tickets also you can see i'm up to 22 over here honestly it's not really worth it to pull on every single gacha a lot of these gachas right are not as good uh, when you compare it to your specific class right not everything is going to be good for you so definitely wait for the one for the class that you are job changing into if you are stockpiling for that for paladin itself i don't think
think these are going to be too relevant. You probably want something to do with either attack speed if you're going sacrifice or holy cross and uh, HP as well because HP is very important for Paladin. You definitely want as much HP as possible. So those are going to be the ones I'm going to be saving for. But of course, this is not going to be as important or relevant compared to some of the other things I've mentioned in this video when you want to job change. And that about does it for this video where I touch on my future plan, right? My plan for job changing into Paladin that is hopefully dropping in a month. Also, let me know in the comment section down below how you guys are going to prepare for the job change to Paladin if you guys are really going for Paladin. And if not, which class are you guys most excited for and you're planning to job change into in the future? Also, on the topic of job changing, definitely check out this video over here where I touch on whether it's worth it for you to use your job right just for the job change benefits. I'll see you guys over there. This is Corky Gachas signing off.